Hello guys, this is Eternal Art Heart, aka Turbogam1000, or Cassie Jones if you prefer. There will be some mistakes with this narration, I am only using a basic script. Anyway, I will get straight into it because this part is actually fairly fast. At this point, I am creating the script for my actual comic, um, which means that right now you are seeing me going from page to panel, which is why, what the 1.1 is. It's page 1 and panel 1. And you'll see that a lot throughout this whole thing, and for some reason it's not moving. Why isn't it moving? Uh. Why isn't it moving? Oh, there you go. Um. Sorry, I forgot there was a pause in there as I was trying to think of what to write. <laughs> so with this, I basically get the basic details of what I want to put down in my thumbnails, like how I want the panels to be laid out, what I want them to say. The s sometimes I'll even put in more details like the exact camera angle I want, the exact background, the exact facial expression, etc. But because I'm the only one who creates my comics, I don't really need to go that far in detail. I recommend if you're a comic artist or a manga artist, if you'd want to give it a certain specific title, either way, a comic artist is a manga artist, so... Don't worry too much about the specifics. If you want to do this, I recommend a script. I never used to follow them, and there is a massive difference in my quality now. Um, this script won't take me very long to make because... Well, because it was one page, and it's much easier to create one page than it is to create, like, 21. And it took me a day or several hours to make 21 pages in a script format. Whereas it could only take me... Well, once I checked, it only took me 10 minutes to get this one done. So, the script will be the shortest part of this process, depending on how many times you need to go over it and sort things out. But it should be the fastest part of the process, because this is just you dropping your ideas out. Um, now, I'm onto the thumbnailing process, another part where you drop your ideas out. Don't feel like you have to stick to your script when you're doing this as well. If certain panels don't work, continue on with a different one, design another one. This is why I make more than one thumbnail. Always start with smaller thumbnails, like I'm doing here, where it's just like basic stick figures, just explaining what's going on. Because you can always add more as you go on. But with the thumbnails, I do more than one version. I do one, two, maybe three. I sometimes do four, but because of the size of the thumbnails I've done here, I can only do three, I think. Um, I'm, co I'm watching it through as you're watching it through, so I'm giving you the tips as it's coming, so I know what you, you guys would be on. <coughs> I'm sorry, give me a second, have a drink. This is over an hour long, I'm going to cry. But yeah, like you've seen here, this was the original panel structure. Number one was the original from the script. But because I realised that it didn't work to clarify exactly what I wanted to show and it didn't look interesting enough, I would recreate it to um, match what I wanted in my head. So I redid it with a couple extra panels and it still didn't look 100% right to me. Oh, wait, no. No, this was the one that I actually used. Number two was the one that I used. I tried another third one because I wasn't 100% sure. But in the end, I did figure out what I wanted. Let's get on with number three, shall we? Here we go. Uh, I'm currently just pausing to explain bits, and I'm now currently on number three. So I made a bigger panel, then I made two little ones. Um, oh, wait, no. Number three definitely wasn't the one I used. Um... But every other panel stayed the same, but those two were in the middle. Uh, well, the, the first, there's the first panel, then there's the second panel, but then I turned it to, from one panel to two panels, and now I've tried to make it into three panels, but it still didn't look right. Um, and the reason why the drawings look really shobby and really bad is because with the thumbnailing process, do not focus on the art. Here, you are focusing on getting the story across. If you can understand it in thumbnail form, your readers will understand it in the completed form. That's my philosophy. So I try to make it so people look at my art and think, oh, I know what's going on there, even when it's stick figures and really bad backgrounds. I... I don't know why I put that there. I think it was just to make sure you all knew that I work from left to right because my last comic page was right to left. So now that I've decided on... Now that I've, like, went through and made alterations like what you're seeing here, I will go around, I will circle the one that I choose, and then I will recreate it in larger font. Well, format... So that's what you see. And then add extra details. You'll see that I actually make an alteration to this again as well. Um, at the end. But right now I'm just adding the extra work I need to put in. See, there, there's the alteration. I decided I wanted to split that panel. But because I'd already drawn it, I couldn't split it. So with thumbnails, you make a mess. Just make a mess. As long as you can still understand them. 
unless you're working in a team. If you're working in a team, I recommend you redraw the thumbnails or redraw the finished ones once you've come up with your basic idea that you're definitely wanting to keep to. Because if you're working in a team, they're not going to understand what's going on in your head like you do. Okay, I'm not sure. I think I'm just about done with the thumbnail, so you're going to see a picture of them. And that's what they look like. Fairly close to what they look like finished, but with stick figures. And now I'm onto the panelling. With the panelling, I do it in black first, because I have this special technique. Once I've finished putting in the black panels, which you'll see me alter here, because I've learned recently that having the panels the same size around the edges is actually really good for your um, continuity in your comic. Like I'm removing that panel now because that's supposed to be an invisible panel. So what I do is, once I've gotten all the panels in, which I'm doing now, I then alter them around because, you know, you want to make sure they're perfectly aligned and they're perfectly right to what you see in your head. And add the extra panels. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. And then I go on to select and I, the selection thing, the pixel selection, and I go on shrink a selected area and I move it down to six points and then I press delete, which will remove everything but a small outline of what you want, which is a good thing to have. And now, because of the fact that I'm working on Naruto, I thought it'd be best to use an actual Naruto background. So what I've done is I've just taken a Naruto background, put it in, and I'll be drawing my character straight onto it. When I ink it, I will not be copying the background because there are people there and I don't want people in the background that I'm doing that and I'm not that much of a cheat. It's just that I've learnt recently that using tracing backgrounds when they are not from your full imagination, like Naruto isn't mine, so I can't really get that point. Um... Oh, uh, sorry, the, the drawings are confusing me. Basically, I've learned that if you trace the background when it's not your full thing, your fully created imagination and imaginary world, you're actually more likely to get a very good detailed background, which is something I'm actually amazed by now. So right now, I am drawing the skeletal figures, which is where I just draw the basic gist of the skeleton, how I want them sat, how I want them to look, because once I do that... I can get their poses right, like some things in their poses might not look right in the later process. So I try to alter it so it looks fine. And then I move on to a more detailed version of this. I think this is going to be the second skeletal structure. Or, if not, it's going to be the basic shapes. Yes, it's the basic shapes. So what I do here is it's a mix of a stick figure and a basic shape. It looks a bit like Sunny from iRobot, and I love it. It's funny. Um, Well, it's a girl, so it wouldn't be Sunny. It'd be um, Sonya. Right, Sonya from iRobot. There you go. <laughs> That's not a real thing, I was joking. What I do here is I basically alter it so the stick figures match more to what I'm looking for. Like, I wanted her sat down, ripping it open, the bottle, because Kaide is a character who, if she drinks water, it can fa be fatal to her because of her fire abilities. If you want to understand more about her, I recommend watching my fan fiction because, well, reading my fan fiction, because it's. It, it's harder for me to explain um, via a YouTube video that's only an hour long than it is to read it and read all through the 17 long chapters to understand it. So yeah, what you saw me do there was because I couldn't figure out the pose right, I couldn't get the arm right or anything like that, I, um, era I basically drew the full thing, zoomed it up and erased the bits I didn't need. And now I'm going on to the proper structuring of the characters, which is the anatomical sketches, which is... Very important for me, and this isn't a necess sorry, this isn't a necessity, but it's important for me. What you need to remember is that I am not confident with drawing clothing straight onto a stick figure. I need to know exactly the proportions of my character. So what I do is I like to sketch them fully anatom this full anatomical designs first, even though some most comic artists actually think it's a bad idea because it wastes too much time. But for me, it's just. It's how I like to work. It's something that I've always done and always will do because it's it, it's just easier for me to um, add clothes. I am so panicking right now. I really think this um, commentary looks terrible. As terrible as that character's waist does right now. I alter this. Don't worry. And there we go. Um, so yeah, I go straight onto the anatomical study so I can get the clothes right on the characters afterwards because there's always the chance that you'll make clothes look too stiff if you do it wrong. Uh, shoulder didn't look right, so I've just made some alteration. And there will be moments of silence when I don't know what I'm doing. And here's where I have, I have a lot of trouble here. I actually change a lot about this character's position when I realise it. Because he's one, he's bent too far down. He looks like his spine is broken. 
And for another, the way he was grabbing our, her um, bottle didn't work with his position because he was stretched his arm too far or he would have look, looked like that, which was just weird. So I altered it so he snatched it from her hand and it was further away from her. Like he just swiped it out of her hand. Get another drink while I wait for that to happen. I'm not sure whether this is much more a live commentary than I'm used to doing because I'm really freaking out right now because I really don't want to know you and I'm really bad at commentary especially with the tutorial I hope I'm getting my points across so yeah that's what I decided to do there because I realized that his position didn't work for the arm and I, now that I've redone it I'm so much more proud of it you know once I made the rest of the alterations I always recommend sketching comic pages digitally because it wasn't until recently I realised that with a comic page, it's much harder to make loads of changes. Traditionally, because the erasing can destroy the paper. So I've realised that when doing comic pages, because it's doing a lot of new positions I've never done before, like that one that you've just seen, that sketching digitally makes it much easier to alter. And now we're moving on to... Oh, I think now we're moving on to actually collecting the stuff needed to create the character designs, which means I'm onto the detailed sketches. The reason why you're seeing a lot of pauses is because I'm going on my um, deviant art to collect them because I had not, I did not have my um, memory card, like my hard drive connected at the time, and all my work is on my hard drive. So now you're going to see me adding the details in, which is the expressions of the characters, the hair, the face, the clothes. Usually I do the face first and then move on to the clothes because I like to know where the face is going to be, the hair is going to be, because then I know when the, I just, it's just, it helps me get the feel for the character. And the sketches are never going to look, um, the sketches are always going to look slightly better than the inking, in my opinion, because the sketches have more life to them. When you ink, you remove a little bit of that life because you're making them neater. So if you notice that I am much, I'm actually prouder of my sketch work than I am my ink work, but I love inking more. Inking is my favourite part of it. Uh, which will be much more explained later. So as you can see, I am currently adding the clothing. I'm actually going over the old lines as well in most places because I've realised that if I don't, um, they will be fit. They'll be they'll vanish when I remove the layer because I remove. Well, I don't remove. I stop them being seen. Um, when I move on to the next process because I feel like they get distracting after a while, and that's me adding a W to the bottle so I know it's water. Uh, adding the details to this character. Sometimes I'll copy the face-like shape. One side will be the same as the other. But then I realise that you don't need to do that. With the eye, I definitely do it because um, the one thing I have OCD with is the eye because if it looks too far down, it looks ridiculous and I don't like it. And if you look, I actually moved her neck down a little bit as well because it felt like her neck wasn't... It was too wide for a woman, especially, and it just didn't didn't look right. Uh, her expression didn't seem right, so what I did was I drew it off of her and then skewed it and free transformed it to make it look better. And there I am, because I couldn't get her hair right, so what I did was I um, just took a version of her and used it. So if you get whiplash from the amount of times I change the um, picture back, please, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just adding the spikes in now. Her hair is impossibly hard to draw, but at the same time it's so fun, because she's supposed to look like this fire on her head. Which is the main point. Some interesting backstory to this character. She used to be Suigetsu, if you know the show. Suigetsu is one of the characters who follows Sasuke around and is based off of a water creature. Mainly a shark, I think. No, no, that's Kizame. Never mind. He's not based off a shark, but he has a shark's tooth, which is where her fan came from. She was going to be Suigetsu's cousin, but as it went on, I thought, oh, it doesn't really work. So now she's Orochi she was going to be Orochimaru's experiment, but then I thought, no, because that would mean she's 10 years old because she would have been born an experiment. So I thought, wait till she gets to a certain age in my story and then have her be kidnapped and become an experiment. Therefore, she's still part of... She's still got... She's seen Orochimaru enough to be part of the story behind them. I didn't want her to be friends with Orochimaru from the beginning because I thought that was too... Too typical, really. I know a lot of stories that do that and it bothers me. Like, I wanted to and I thought it really would have made it easier to... um get their romantic pairing together but at the same time it was just it just it felt like it had been done a million times 
Like, how many stories must Orochimaru have been in where he's known the girl he likes for most, if not all, of his life? The amount of Tsunade stories there are based on that alone is ridiculous. Which makes sense, they did grow up together. But because of that, it's like, well, if I do that, it might just be that I'm copying. And you'll see me do a lot of editing here, going back to the drawing in hand, because um, no matter what I did, I could not get this hand to look right. And off, scra off camera, I managed to fix it. And I'm sorry I never caught it, but because I was off, um, I was forced to be having a rest for the night because I'd worked really hard, and I actually had a massive headache and I wasn't feeling well. But you know me, a workaholic. I can't. I just can't. All right. So what I did was I managed to fix it off camera, and you'll see me making some alterations. This is why I love sketching digital, digital, digitally. And uh, there's some alterations, which again still didn't look right. It turns out it's because, one, her thumb wouldn't be there, and two, her fingers wouldn't be curled around that far, especially with the size of the bottle. Otherwise, she wouldn't really be grasping it, and it should just fall out of her hand. And here I go with the easiest part, which is drawing the flutter of the um, cape. Which was the easiest part, because I'd basically drawn it all great first hand. I just made some slight alterations. And we're on to my favourite panel. I love this panel. I started on Orochimaru, and then I realised that I needed his reference for it, so I thought, right, move on to Kaide first. Get her finished, because she was the main one. Uh, her eyes are terrible. I think I changed them. Please tell me I changed them. Please, yeah, there you go. Okay, I did change them because they didn't look good that time, but Kaida's expression, especially, is one of my favourite things about this panel. She's just so numb to the fact that the guy she loves, who she believed to be dead, is now alive. And if you're wondering what part that is, it's a spoiler for the next, for like the really far future of my fanfic, which would take like, considering it took two years to get to chapter 17, it'll probably take me another like three to get to that point. But I love making it. It's fun. And I know I'm not going to make any money out of it, but when you love a fandom that much, you don't really mind. Well, if you're me, I'm not sure if anybody else disagrees. But I wanted to make this comic specifically because, um,. I thought, well, my first comic tutorial had these characters in it, and it was basically this moment, just slightly further ahead. So I thought, why don't I make a prequel to go with the sequel of the first comic tutorial? Haha. -ha. <laughs> so that's what I did. And um, hands are evil. Just as bad as feet. Feet are evil, hands are evil, but my god, am I proud of them. And just make some alterations. Like, I don't really know if I should should explain any more to the sketching process, but um, I will add a little bit in here, which is slash commentary as well. When I sketch, I don't use the sketching tool. I used to, but now I'm not a fan. So what I use is a grey version of the um, G-Pen. So what I do is I lower the colour of the G-Pen to a grey, and then I just ink over. And when I want to lighten it so I can ink it over properly, like I'm sketching right now, when I want to ink it over properly, I change the opacity to the sketch so it's really faint and then ink over that which you'll see eventually once I move on why have I paused why have I paused uh, uh, oh right it must have been that I found a picture of Orochimaru so you might see a few more pauses and there's Orochimaru's eye I gotta tell you what it's, it's expressions in this especially the eye in the lower left corner once it's finished are my favorite parts about this i feel like i really caught the essence of an annoyed orochimaru and his hair looks so pretty and i forgot he wore a hood in this so that's what you're going to see me sort out in a sec because i think in the manga especially orochimaru walks back to konoha to um with sasuke to confront the hokage during this fourth great shinobi war and he's wearing this cloak so no one recognizes him so I thought that it'd be clever. I think he does it in the anime too. I thought it'd be clever to use that so that way you definitely know it's in that moment. So that's what you're seeing here. Doing a bit more sketching. I hate drawing hands. I admit that. But uh, the digital thing is just so much easier. There you go. Look at that hand. Look at it. Look at it. It's so beautiful. And I tried something different here but I thought it won't work because his hand doesn't match it. So I thought have it so it looks like it's curved on both ends so it's like a neutral middle point. Like he's just snatched out of her hand and he's not really doing anything with it yet. Uh, put some trouser legs in there which are the easiest part of him to draw. His legs are not but the trouser legs were. Orochimaru was the easiest one to draw on this because he only appeared in like two panels and one of them was an eye shot. <laughs> but I worked really hard to make him look good in both because it was like well, Orochimaru and Kaida are the main characters, and they're the only characters that show up, so they both got to look good. Just doing the sketching. Some evil, angry eyes. Uh, I put the pattern in 
um, with lines here, but in the inking phase you won't see them because I add them in colour later so there's no outline because, yes, it, I do it in traditional work because it's harder to tell with traditional work when where you need to put things, but in the digital work it was much easier because I had the outline and the sketch. Alright, uh, here we are. This is where I'm starting to fix bits, but it still doesn't look right. Oh, God. Uh, add some greying area, blacking areas. I don't know. Ah, there we go. And I finished the sketch. I'm sorry about how mis mismatched this is. But that's the fully finished sketch. And you're about to see me go into the inking. My favourite part of the process. For this, I start with a very thin inking lines. B basic inking, basically. That's what I call it. A basic inking phrase. And I'm sorry about the pop. That was me snapping my tongue off the roof of my mouth. I'm not eating Rice Krispies. Hang on a second. And I'm hydrated. Um, well, I'm not. It's Coke. Um, Coca-Cola. I know I'm going to get one of those cheeky comments. Oh my god, she's got Coke. Coca-Cola. <laughs> anyway, with this process, I basically start with a very varied, like, very thin line art where I don't really put a lot of variety in the lines, but that's because I add the variety later. Right now, I'm just trying to ink it basic, um, the basics of it so I know exactly... What I'll need to add shadows to later, plus, you know, inking to me is the most important part. And look at that shoe. I need a few line shades underneath because um, it just adds a little bit more depth to me. But I don't usually add them a lot. I only ever add them to parts of the character's holding or parts of the background that she's stood in. Uh, here it is with me tracing the background because I didn't need to before. This is why I'm doing it now. Pardon me. Um, and I do this via... Um, line tools and curved line tools because backgrounds like this not forests or anything but backgrounds that involve buildings and walls are manufactured so therefore i try to manufacture them in a stiffer way so they look like they've been built they don't look like they grew which is why in my um carved in stone manga the stairs look a bit wonky because tr a tree grew around them um i should really post those online i did five pages of that so what you see in here is me just basically doing the background. Thinner lines for the furthest background because it's supposed to be smaller. Because it's the far background. And I add as much detail as I can without adding too much because I want the focus to be the foreground still. So you'll see a lot of that. I feel like this is less of a tutorial and more of how I make things. So I might not put it as a tutorial. But the reason why I said it was a tutorial is because I feel free, anyone here, to use the tips that I use here Basically, this is how I make it. Feel free to use them. Just let me... If you do use them, I really want to see the artwork you make with them. You can use these for illustrations as well. This isn't... I actually learned to do it this way via my illustrations. Because I did illustrations before I did comics. I wanted to be an illustrator before I was a comic artist. But then I realised that I'm much, much more passionate about manga. And I, I wanted to be a concept artist originally. But I just realised that... I want to make my own stories. Here, you'll see that I'm doing the line art traditionally without using like the line tool. Well, not traditionally. Without using the line tool and the curved line tool because I wanted to show a less manufactured point of view, which is where trees and leaves and walls would come in. So right now, I'm just adding them little bits here. And I'm using the pen tool again here because it's harder to draw them. A little bit of cracks and gravel and muck because, you know, it's not going to look perfect. There's going to be wear and tear there are some lines there that i need to add which is bricks and then you've got dirt yada 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 so to me the sketching part is basics the inking is where you add all the detail and then when you're doing the shading you amplify that detail and here i am sorting out kaida's hair a pain to ink but so fun to draw and um like i was saying before another tip towards inking if you're going to use um if you're going to ink, don't expect it to look as good as the sketch or as lively. Expect it to look a little stiffer because you've basically neatened a rough version of it. It's not going to look 100%. But with practice and dedication, it will. You have nothing to be afraid of. Just because your sketch doesn't match your inking does not mean you aren't a good artist. Which is what I used to think, but look at me now. <coughs> oh, my nose is watering. I'm sorry. I think I'm getting ill, people. So there you can see me again. Um, copying the eye over. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Oh, I think I realised a minute in that that eye doesn't look right, and I think I saw it. Oh, there you go. There, there. I'm sorting it. There we go. So yeah. Um, though people say you should never copy the eye, drawing the second eye is the hardest thing, apart from hands, to do. And I've just realised I've turned into Jack Whitehall. I'm sorry. It is the hottest thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, if you don't understand it, watch Jack Whitehall. He's so funny. But um. For me, it's just, it's so fun to ink, but it's so difficult, and just have patience with it. It will take you a long time. I've learnt that the fastest I ink is two pages a day. I can't work any faster than that anymore. And I think the reason for that is because now that I work digitally, I do everything digitally, which can be a difficult thing to get used to. So, just have patience with it. Focus, and you will be fine. Take breaks, because people say that's a bad thing, and even I don't follow it. But taking breaks is very important too, because if you start to get bored of inking halfway through because you haven't taken a break, it will really affect your art, like badly, and you don't want that. You'll start rushing, and the rushing will end with you making mistakes, and those mistakes will debilitate you. It'll make you feel like you aren't worth doing it anymore, and it's not fun. It's a horrible, horrible feeling. So, um. As you can tell, I'm still... I, I don't know what else to tell you about inking, really. Hmm. Don't be afraid to change the inking with the... Like like you do with the sketching. You scale it, rotate it, transform it. Don't be afraid to do that either. Just because you've inked it doesn't mean it's permanent. It can still be changed. For me, it's past the inking process when things can't be changed. Because once the inking's down, you can't change where the colours go because the inking's there. Once you finish the inking, that's it. Really. I'm just doing the hand. Oh, I managed to fix that hand off camera. There you go. Doesn't that look loads better now? Oh. <laughs> and you've got yourself an arm. And some scars. I usually make the scars whiter, but because of the fact that I make comics, I've actually realised that I enjoy the look of the scars when they look like skin, and you just see indications that they're there. Just because it's interesting, and it's, it's, just, it's just interesting, really, and... The blacking out parts are hard too because I'm not very good. Well, I am. That was not the right word. I'm not very. I'm not very patient with the blacking out. I tend to try and make the pen thicker, but I've realised that that's a bad thing because then I won't be able to get the same thickness I had for the rest, which might not be a bad thing. But at the same time, it, if it doesn't look similar, it's too inconsistent and it wouldn't work. And here's where I get really sad because I really love the sketch, and for some reason the inking didn't come out as good. And this is where I'm coming up with the um, tip of don't get discouraged because your inking might not be as good as your sketching. That's just natural because the sketching looks more natural because you put a lot less time and thinking into making it look perfect. You just want to get the the detail down. You just want to be able to sketch out what you want to ink, what you want to colour. And I'm just jealous of those sketch artists that make beautiful, perfect pieces. And if they don't, they're lying. I'm kidding. No piece is perfect as well. Do not let that discourage you. Look at the pretty eyes. Yeah, Kaida's eyes are actually a lot more sinister when they're inked because she's supposed to have very small pupils and one eye is bigger than, further up than the other. I don't think I fixed that. No, I do. Okay. No, I don't. I do. There we go. But yeah, um... Any other tips for inking? Always use a G pen for me as well. You can use the different pens if you want. It depends on your method. But for me, it's always the G pen because I love the control it gives you. You can choose how thick the lines are, how thin they are. I'm sorry if my voice is muffled. I was itching my nose with a towel. I've just gotten out of the shower. So yeah, you're seeing me here having problems with the inking because the sketch might be a bit too dark. Uh, so I go back and I sort it and then I move on to the rest like normal. Um, feel free to change the opacity of the sketch as well while you're inking just so you can see things better because sometimes doing this can be disorientating to the reviewer if you're a YouTube artist like me that is I've been told recently that I overwork myself I do YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, fan fiction, deviant art and I've been told off for how much work I do but to me I'm not happy until I'm work unless I'm working I used the curved line tool there because I was really really annoyed with how badly I was doing with the um, curving but I do like it now. I'm happy with this. Um, and sometimes using the curved line tool on characters isn't a bad thing either. Like, especially for the breasts and areas. Because you don't want them to look wonky. But you don't want them to look perfect. Which is what I was trying not to do. I tried to make them a teardrop shape. Please tell me if I got that right. 
So yeah, and now I'm moving on to inking Orochimaru, which was hard. He's so difficult to ink because of his hair. Have short hair like Kaide. <laughs> but he's my favourite character, so he's forgiven. Thanks. But with the chin, if you've noticed, I made the chin look more pushed out. And the reason why for this is because I did a screenshot redraw of Blaine from iZombie. And I learnt that adding that realistic chin, like the underneath of the chin, to the character actually adds a lot more to your art. So I'm proud of that. And there you see I'm not adding the um, pattern in his eyes with the ink tool. Because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to give it that black line, that solid black line, because it's part of his skin. Therefore, it's the same colour. It, it hasn't got an outline. It's just part of his skin. So, just sorting this bit out. Most of these lines were drawn by me. Most of the lines weren't drawn with a line tool or a curved line tool. But it's just sometimes when you're not feeling 100% confident, it can be a nice way to take that minute to breathe and just use a different line and make sure you're happy with it. But I'm so confident in my inking that I don't really use it a lot. Because inking to me, well, to me, inking was the the part of the process I was good at when I was younger. Black and white was how I worked. But then I moved on to colour and I realised I love how colour portrays a comic. It's just so vibrant and interesting. Unless you're doing a nighttime scene like this one, then it'll be more muted and depressing. But that's the point. It's a dark scene. It's supposed to be dark. But, um... Colouring to me is just more interesting than black and white. And I, I could never figure out screen tones. And yes, that might sound like I'm running away from them. But I did try them and I didn't like it. It just didn't feel right to me. And now I'm adding the black to Orochimaru's eye. And if you look, I actually did thicken the um, pen tool. Because there was nowhere I could sit there for hours on end. Filling that in with the thinness of that pen. No one has that time. Which is another reason that these digital softwares are so good for comics. It's because no one has the time to do that. If you're a professional comic artist, you're not going to have the time to sit there and nitpick over everything and do carefully doodle in the black with a very thin fine liner. Because comic is a business, among everything else. If you do it for a hobby, good on you. I used to do it for a hobby, but I just, I just, I love what I do. And I just wanted to make a, bit, a living out of it because I just can't imagine myself doing anything but what I love to do. So, um... You'll see me doing a lot of alterations to his eye because of the fact is, because of this detailed sequence that I need to have and his eye is much more zoomed in, I've got to focus more on the detail. I forgot the veins in his eye. And here I am just getting rid of the part outside the barriers. And we're now moving on to another part of the process that I love. This is adding depth to the line art. Basically, what I do here is I take the G pen and I go to all the corners or areas where shadows would overlap and I add a slight triangle or a thick line. This was inspired to me by Mystique Arts. Um, if you haven't seen her, look it up. I cannot remember how to spell it. So you'll have to figure that bit out yourself, and I'm sorry. I would um, put a channel in the description, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that. I'm not used to explaining to people um, where I got the idea from. Because I used to have this really thick line t um, style, which some of you would remember from my 2006 um, YouTube video, which I will link in the description below. But I learnt recently, like not recently, but last year, that it's actually taking away a lot of life from my drawings. It's making it too stiff. <laughs> so I tried to lower it down, and I admit, one, it's a, it's time saving, which is good if you want to make comics into a business, and it's also it's more lifelike to me. It doesn't have too much going on, and the colouring is left to take up the rest of the imagination, really. And it's really nice because colouring's fun. So what you see in here is I'm adding the thick lines everywhere that I need to. So places where hair would go behind clothes or where it overlaps with other pieces of hair or where the lines overlap with the panel layout themselves. If the panel ends, I add a little thicker line at the edge just because that's my style. That's how I am. And it's a very important part of the process and I'm just adding some lines to the neck because I usually like to draw um, shadow lines. I didn't do it as much in the last panel. I just... I, I'm not sure whether I want to keep it or not. I bounce between. So what you guys think is important. If you guys think I should keep the um, shadow in the neck. Or if I should let the colouring take over that. Let me know in the comments below. Or if you can. Let me know on any of my other social media platforms. Which will also be linked be below as well. Uh, so I'm not sure what else to talk about with the inking here. Always use a G pen. I've said that before. But you can use a Maru pen for these bits. It just depends on what you want to do, really. But with this, it's very self-explanatory. Add the triangles of shadow where you think there would be shadow. 
or where you think there would be a place where two parts overlap and then you have yourself pretty it's it's adding depth without having to worry about your constant line consistency because I have a quite heavy hand so you have to be careful because I can't make consistent lines or I can't make thin lines in certain areas so having a thin pen and then going in and adding shadow to make the place some areas look thicker is really good to me I even do this with backgrounds but it's re it's very hard with backgrounds so make sure you calculate where it is always think actually no no, I was going to say always think of where your light source is coming from, but that depends on what kind of line art style you use. Don't you, ha you don't have to follow my exact advice. I'm just giving you tips on how to, how I make comics. I'm going to call this video how I make comics from start to finish. Time M um, number two. Because right now it feels less like a tutorial and more like an hour long commentary video. But if you st if you guys do get advice from this, I am more than happy to extend more. Just ask me in the comments or ask even request another video. I can go in depth of each system here. I know I'm doing it now, but I could go I could do a video about sketching, inking, colouring, highlighting, how to write your text. I could even make ones about character design and mood setting and lighting and I love what I do and I adore you guys for watching my thing, my YouTube videos because I honestly thought I was bad until I reached 100 subscribers because it ta it was just like more subscribers gain like the first 100 in the first few weeks and it's like quite depressing when you consider you compare yourself to Markiplier or Jacksepticeye or even Lemmy a Crescent or you know the artists Mark Crilly for example is one of my biggest inspirations I just need a drink my throat is starting to burn so yeah Matt Crilly is one of my biggest inspirations. He's the reason I want to stay in Britain, but still make manga. I want to prove that you don't need to go to Japan to be a successful manga artist, and that you just need to carve the path for yourself. So, for that reason, I always compare myself to their YouTube channels, and it's really debilitating, because you just feel like I'm never going to be as good as them. So, having reached 100 subscribers, I must thank all of you for your kindness, your consideration, and your desire to watch my videos. And I will keep making more content, and I will keep up this sh great work that I try to do. And yes, I'm still calling my own work great, but that's because you need the confidence. You don't need arrogance. I think my work's great, but I know I can improve. You need confidence, though. People will only respect you if you have the confidence for your art. That's another point I want to make. If you are confident in your art, people will love you. Because they're like, oh, she knows what she's doing. She's really good. Or he knows what he's doing. He's really good. And he really knows that. He knows that. He wants to help others to be as good. And it really helps them. It motivates them. It motivates you. And it's just, it's wonderful. And I'm sorry I went off on a rant there. It's just, I don't know what else to talk about until I'm done. Um, I am inking Orochimaru. Who, by the way, people will judge me for. But I have a major crush on. Yes, he's a creep. And he's weird and scary. Which is why I wouldn't date him if he was real. But, um, he's just, to me, he's one of the most interesting characters in Naruto, and I actually started to respect him before I started to have a crush on him. I actually had an adopted daughter character for him at first, because I respected him, I didn't fancy him. But as I grew to fancy him, Kaede came into um, fruition, and she's now my favourite OC of all time, apart from Violet, Jane, who are my Doctor Who... Violet is my Tales of the Abyss OC, and, Doc and my Jane Tyler is my Doctor Who OC, who was also my first... Or see character for a fan fiction. So if it weren't for Jane, Kaide wouldn't be here. Um, and just seeing how many people love my work and my characters and everything that I do is so inspiring. And I thank every single one of you, every single one of you, for being there for me. Uh, now, um, this is the longest part of the video, I swear. Uh. Maybe I should have added music. <laughs> I just thought you said like a full hour long experience and I need to practice commentating so why not try with an hour long video if I can't get it right with an hour long video what am I going to do um so yeah also depending on the size of the area also depends on the size of the shadows the bigger the area the more shadow I add because to me the bigger the area the bigger the shadow is going to be depending on how big the shadow is supposed to be. Like, if a small area has shadow, you're not going to see a lot of shadow compared to highlight, like with the tiny little edges of her hair that you just saw me ink. Forgot her ears. Can't believe I did that. Well done, Kirsty. Also, if you're wondering, I call myself Kirsty because that is my name. I think I mentioned it in the beginning of the video. 
Hello, my name is Atan Lionheart, aka Turbo Game 1000. Oh, yes, or Kirsty Jones if you'd prefer. I call myself Kirsty Jones in my videos as well, in case I do end up publishing something. I have to use my real name instead of my, um, the Eternal Art at Heart. Um, so the reason why I put that in there is if any of you want to see my work and it's labelled under my real name, you'll know where to look. I'm just, I erased bits so the, the tears looked like they were making more, they were going over the eyeball basically, they were like, the eyelashes were getting wet so you couldn't see them as much. Oh, this is taking so long. I also want to tell you, is, um, I learnt this recently, if you get discouraged halfway through inking, like you start feeling like, oh, when is this going to end, when is this going to end, or halfway through colouring, or halfway through sketching, stick with it. You get that feeling at the beginning of it, because it's the point where you go from motivated to demotivated, and then fear takes over. And the reason why you want it to be over is because you're scared you'll ruin it. And just don't listen to it. Keep working, keep hard, because the feeling of accomplishment you get when you've finished a comic page is amazing. It's almost as good as getting it published and holding it in your hands. And yes, people might know that that's my biggest obsession, because I want to, I want to feel like, as well as I want to inspire others to do the same thing, I want to feel like I've done something with my life on my own, because... With my disability, which is ADHD, it's it's very, very painful when you need to get help for a lot of things. So having something that's just yours, like my drawing, makes you want to strive to do it permanently for yourself. So I want to hold the book in my hand to validate to myself and to everyone who I know who's helped me over the years that, yes, thank you so much for your help, but now I'm at the point where I can do it alone. And I want you all to know that I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I hope you're proud of me. And even if they're not, even if they're not proud of me, it doesn't matter. I've got a published book in my hand. <laughs> but yeah, nothing's nicer than hearing your parents say you're proud of them. Because I posted this picture online, and my mum went, look at this picture, look at it, it's from my daughter, proud mum alert. And I, in my head I was like, oh my god, my mother's proud of me. And why wouldn't she be? Because if your parents are proud of you... They're going to be proud of you, and of You're their child. You achieve anything, and they'll be proud of you. If you ever think your parents aren't proud of you, they are. And I'm on to the colouring, and I totally forgot. I'm very sorry. So for this, I basically used the colours from the actual thingy. But if you look, I don't copy the exact picture, because like I said, I didn't want any people in the background. And it was going to be a night scene, so that picture wouldn't have worked anyway. So what I've done is I've just taken the colours from the actual picture and put them onto there. made some alterations, because... As I've said before, my Cintiq has a different colour palette to how my laptop looks. And because my laptop is my main source of social media and any form of internet or basic artwork deal type stuff, I tend to use that more. So what I want to do is I want to look at it and think, yeah, it's good on my laptop. Because if it isn't good on my laptop, it isn't good to me. So what I've done there is I've basically checked it on my Cintiq, checked it on my laptop. If it doesn't match my laptop, I change it so it looks better on my laptop. Even if it looks strange on my Cintiq, because I know for a fact the laptop is the main thing I'm going to be looking at. And if you also want to know why I'm not making any mistakes in the background, with every layer, with every colouring layer, always make a new layer, and then m when you're finished with that layer and you've got it all sorted out, merge it with the other colouring layers. So basically, you make one layer for the w door, and then for underneath the door, like say you're doing the um, the pillar thing, which is what I did next, make a layer underneath it. So when you do colour over it. You will not affect the green layer, the green door layering. And then once you've done that, merge the both layers together and it'll look the same as it did before. And then continue the process, make a new layer underneath, add the colours, merge the layers, new layer, merge layer, new layer, merge layer, until you finish the colouring. I kept the background layers, colouring layer, and the character colouring, colouring layer different until around the end. Because I wanted to make sure I got everything right in the characters and in the backgrounds. And then... Once I was done there, I merged all the layers together and did the sky and the backgrounds of the actual panels themselves that weren't part of this um, big background here, you see right now, because the rest of the panels don't have backgrounds, if you've looked. Because in manga, you don't need a lot of backgrounds. You need to set the, st set the scene and show any slight changes, which are done in the second panel, third panel. But you don't need to have backgrounds in every single page because it can be distract every single panel. Because one, it can be distracting, and two, it's just excess work you're adding for yourself when you might have a crunch time. You might have a deadline. You might have a moment where you're like, "Oh, I've got to stop. I've got to hurry up." So you just like, right? Let's put the backgrounds in where I need them, not where, not just unnecessarily because it would be painfully impossible to draw them. 
But yeah, I'm just adding the colouring. And this is where the lasso tool makes more than a little bit of difference. I use the lasso tool to get most of the colouring done because what you do is you draw around it, make a circle or something, and then you press the fill button and it'll immediately fill. Instead of you having to go in and ink it in and draw like just every single line of colour. And I do that sometimes on parts that just aren't fully, like if I make a mistake or something, but I don't do it for the whole thing. And I'm making the background darker the further away it gets because you're not looking at it from that point anymore. And I think if you fade it, it looks a bit weird like they've done in that one. But, um, so I just make the background darker as it gets further away because I like it more, see? And it looks more like, oh, oh, that background's far away. Add some trees. Doing the lasso tool again. See, with the lasso tool, don't fret if you made mistakes. Like, if you've gone over or under the lines, you can use the brush tool then to sort those problems out. Eraser tool, brush tool, whichever one you want to use. I use the G pen mainly. I use the G pen end of. I made the sky blue and then remember this was a night scene. So I had to, like, I was like, oh, hang on. Hang on, this isn't right. There we go. <laughs> but then I removed it completely because I thought, right, get the colouring done, then sort it out. Otherwise, it's still going to look weird. So now we're moving on to color character colouring. And at first I used random colours that I thought of that were actually the colours of the character. And then I realised that she wouldn't look right because she has set colours. So I took a picture of her offline, which I'm not sure if I find yet. I'm not sure if I find them yet. I think I find them after drawing her hair. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I'm looking for them now. I'm looking for them now. So what I've done is I've d what I've done is I've got a um, di MS Paint version which has all the shadings separated. So what I need is the base color. So what I do is I copy the um, the MS Paint version onto a different document and use that to get the colors right for my characters because they're the basic flat colors, which is what I need for her right now because I don't shade. I shade over the flat colors, so you won't see any shading in the flat colors. So I'm just using her to get the colours right. I love her hair. It's so fiery. Which is the point, might I add. But I ended up... Um, another point I was going to make is um, Suigetsu's fang. The reason why she has a fang originally is because she was Suigetsu's cousin. But now she has it because it was a genetic anomaly. And I did not want to get rid of it. Because I love the fang on her character. It made her look wild. It made her look fiery. It made her look like a rebel. And it was mint. Because she is a rebel. She's like She even defies Orochimaru. <laughs> And he's terrifying. Can you believe she's 48? Yeah. Yeah. Well, around... Yeah, I think she's around 50 in the Shippuden version. So technically she's around 50 now. She doesn't look it. That's the point. I can't imagine Orochimaru going out with someone who doesn't look younger than they are. It's just... He's, he's very vain about his own appearance. I think he'd be vain about his girlfriends as well. And she's got very tanned skin because she was brought up in Sunagakyo, which was the desert. And even though all the characters in Sunugiku were pale-skinned, I just didn't feel like it was right. It felt illogical to me, so I made her darker-skinned. Because she would, she'd been out in the sun her whole life. Plus, I thought it went with the warm colours of her um, fire abilities. So, yeah, I'm just sorting that out now. The colouring takes just as long as the inking. I don't know what else to say. Oh, for the colouring, always keep, um, if you're going to merge the layers, um, always make sure you've got, um, you got the colours right, basically. You can do what I did later on, and that's just fill in the colour differently later. I think I do that later on. But usually I'd prefer to have all the colours right beforehand, because it can really dodge you up your drawing if you don't. Because if you do what I do and ta correct the tones to match the atmosphere, like if it's night time or something, and you haven't changed the tone to match the one you want, it'll dodge you up. Because manufacturing the tone yourself is harder than it seems, for me anyway. So I use tonal, cor tonal correction a lot, which is where you can change the hues so there's more magenta shadows or blue shadows. And mainly in my drawings I use a lot of... Um, Oh, what's the word? I use a lot of um, hues, basically. And if I'm doing a sunset scene, I use a lot of yellows and reds. But if I'm doing a lot of um, nighttime scenes, I use a lot of magentas and blues. 
because of the shading, because of the fact that the world is no longer vibrant. But when you're doing a scene in midday, feel free to leave the colours exactly as they were when you first designed her, because technically it's natural lighting. Natural lighting doesn't change it. So I say this was a daytime scene, she would still be in all the colours she was originally. But because it was a nighttime scene, I had to change it, which you'll see eventually. And. It is the lasso tool coming into effect again. Or later on you'll see me op 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 make the panels opaque. So that way none of the um, mistakes go into the background anymore. But the reason why I didn't do that in the beginning is because I wanted to make that broken in the middle panel. But I'll figure out a way to fix that later on, which I'll show when it comes up. I was going to colour in the inside of her um, bottle, but then I remembered that I preferred it where it was slightly like murky. So what I was going to do was I was going to make it the colour it was supposed to be. And I'll change it later on with the hand as well, because you can see the hand through the bottle when I get to that point. Wait, no, I've already done it, so yeah. You'll see the hand through the bottle, but later on I'll erase that, so you can still see the hand, but there's no colour in it. Just adding some colour and erasing mistakes. And the reason why none of the colours going into the leaves is because they're actually a stamp, and later on I use a multiply tool to colour those in. I have to put the multiply tool above the stamp's shading, like ink work, because there's a layer specifically for the stamps. And I put it above them, so that way the layer, the... um leaves are green because no one wants white leaves in the middle of a green area because it's a hidden leaf and I was gonna add debris instead like to show dust or wind but I thought the leaves were better because it's the hidden leaf village and it just it felt like a great bit of symbolism for that um that moment really because it's like oh look he's back at the hidden leaf his original hometown and look there's leaves dancing around him as if they support him hmm I always wondered if I should have kept that bit pink. But I like it. She's got a lot of warm colours. Actually, she is all warm colours. Which is the point, really, but still. Oh, no, she has a bit of purple in her as well. That's a co cool colour, but that's just because it's the belt, the rope belt, but she ties it around her arm. Because she's got that sash in the middle of her robe, so she doesn't want to wear it there. What am I doing? Ah, oh, I'm getting a picture of Orochimaru, yeah. Yeah, so I could colour the rope, yeah. Because it was the same colour as his rope, really, because it's the hidden leaf, hidden sound village, or Otokakiwa, if you go by the Japanese terms like I do, because I prefer the subs to the dubs. And don't kill me in the comments. I respect the dubs. It's just that I prefer the subs because that's how I watch Naruto, so it's how I like to watch Naruto. And I'm just adding bits that I forgot. Hmm. Uh, here's the bit where I struggled. It was adding the eye colour. I don't think it was her that I struggled with, though. It was Orochimaru's eye colour that I struggled with. Don't be afraid to try out new colours as well. I, um, nothing has to be perfect. It's a comic page. Art isn't perfect. It never will be. Have fun with it. And here you'll see me change the colour of the paper to a grey colour. What you just do is you double click on the paper layer and it'll let you change the colour. It's so I can see Orochimaru's skin because I didn't want to go over the skin in any point because it's really hard to tell on white paper that's what you're seeing here which makes him look terrifying because his eyes are blacked out I wonder what it would be like if Orange Barrow had been reanimated it would have been frightening who have a new idea for a drawing reanimated Orange Maru. Ooh. okay so yeah I didn't have to add a lot of skin colour to Orange Maru because he's basically covered apart from like the the eye pa panel and his skin and ha his face and hand in the other panel. Orochimaru was the easiest thing to colour on this list because he was the one who showed up the least. He looks strange without his eye markings, but he still looks good. I think this is where I had the eye mark. There we go. I'm adding the eye markings now. If you look, I go straight over the skin layer because I realise that I don't need to. I, I, it looks. It's it's supposed to look like that. It's how it was in the anime. It's how I do it here because I started my fan fiction with the anime version of him. And I'm struggling here. There we go. Um, so what I like to do is I like to keep his eyes the same. But in the anime version, they change his eyes later. To, so they cover his entire eye, like, the eyelid like properly, like in the manga version. So when it comes to older version of Orochimaru, I've got to draw him like that. Which is so strange. But for now, I've got the gorgeous evil version of Orochimaru, so... 
until I get up to that part, which is going to take me decades, as I've mentioned. Because getting the motivation to write fanfiction is hard when you've got a lot of university work. Adding the hair colour. I use the same method for the background as I do with the hair colour, so I always add one layer, uh, colour it, then add another layer underneath, colour that so any mistakes that do happen, happen underneath the other layer, then merge them together, it'll keep the mistakes hidden. If it doesn't, there's something wrong with your settings. Adding the tr trousers, because he's basically wearing everything he normally wears, but he's wearing that robe over it, that cloak over it. So, that's what I've just done here. Just basically kept everything the same, except for the cloak. The cloak, I had to come up with the idea myself, because I could not find a good picture of him in it. Uh, he's where I struggled, because I couldn't figure out his eye colour, so I just had to in improvise and make it myself. Because in the um, JPEG image, it didn't look... The right colours, they look too murky, and his eyes are more of like a yellowy, like a dirty yellow and a dirty greeny yellow. So I thought, alright, just make the eye colour up yourself. You know how his eyes are supposed to look. As long as they look at least similar, they'll be fine. And I wasn't trying to be lazy with it, it's just that I could not get the eye colour to look right. It looked too brown or too grey. So yeah, just adding that bit. Yeah, if you see there, that's when yeah I said that it's okay to go underneath the line art and above the line art with the lasso tool, because you can easily fix it. It's not the end of the world if it happens. Like Any mistake you make digitally can be fixed quite easily compared to traditionally. Which is why I make comics digitally now. Because I realise that um, doing it digitally would be easier. Because then I, I, it lessens the amount of mistakes I make. And here's where I'm at the multiply tool now. Which is what I put over the line art. So that I can colour the leaves in. Because you don't want white leaves. And you can't colour the white leaves. Because they're stamps. So I go over with the multiply tool so I can colour them quite nicely. But this also has a risk of going into the actual colouring of my work. So I have to make sure I erase bits that go outside of the leaf. Which is why this takes so long. And still doing it. The stamps are really good if you need them though. Because I can't draw leaves very well. So it's nice to have a stamp where I can. It's nice to have a stamp for everything. There's a stamp for everything in Clip Studio. And it's only 40 quid for the, short, the thing. And that's when I realised, ow hit my hand off the desk and that's when I realised that you could erase parts of the stamps which was a nice feeling to have because it was like yay it's not inside my panels anymore or well, it's not outside my panels anymore but it took so long to colour these leaves and that's what you're seeing me do here same um, thing me as the other ones I do it with the lasso tool any mis mistakes I make I erase or add pen like draw in so that way I don't make any like there see But I do like the variety of the leaves, and even the leaves, that are, even though they are exactly the same, because of the positions they're in, it's hard to tell, and it's quite nice. It's the hidden village of the leaf. It needs to have leaves. Right, have I done them yet? Yeah, I'm just adding the colour to the robe now because I forgot. I do it that way because it was easier at the time, and then I just go in and lasso the rest. This is going to be a half tutorial, half my process. So you feel free, like I said before, feel free to take any advice you want from this. It's not God's gift to Earth, though. So feel free to, if you want to take my advice, feel free to experiment with it. Make your own thing with it. And here's where I change the colour again, because I need to add... Yeah, I need to add the white panelling. This is what I'm doing here. And then I fade parts out so that way you can still see the robe in the outside of the panel. And I'm adding this here. Yeah. Just going to add the bottle now, which is why I've erased that bit in the middle. It makes it look um, transparent, but at the same time it's got colour. And it's quite nice. I actually quite like it. My throat's really sore. This is the hardest thing I've done in my life. I hope I've done really well. If I haven't, I'm sorry. I really am. I'm trying to make it as interesting as I can. It's really hard to do over an hour of commentary. Especially when the video quality isn't very good for you, because before I edit it, it looks really bad. Like, it is edited, I'm just saying, before I render it, it looks really bad, so I'm struggling to see what I want to see, and I'm just adding the paper here. I was going to originally have it say Narutonic on it, but I forgot. And that's a bad thing. Ooh, the tongue was purple. I made some alterations, made it pink. Well, not pink. I have it like a purpley pink, because I know the inside of your lip is not just purple, it's not just pink. 
is like a mix. And I'm adding the background here, but if you look, I'm actually taking a lot of it from that background there. But simpler, there's no lines in this one. Teeth, got to colour the teeth. I didn't colour them, I erased, actually. Because um, usually I use the white paper, so I don't really need to add um, white to it. But if I'm doing an illustration that has a very detailed background, I tend to use white. I erase them bits, erase them there, add here. See, for big areas, you just need to use the rectangle selection tool or any the lasso selection tool. Go around the bit you want to erase and press delete. And then press control D. And you'll, well, control D or command D, depending on if you're using a Mac or a Windows computer. I use a Windows. Hi, I'm sorry about that. Um, my recording told me I'd reached maximum capacity, so I had to stop recording my um, audio for a second and then start re-recording. So if I cut off, I am very sorry. But like I was saying... I use a Windows computer, so I use Command D, but for Mac users, it's Control D. In Mac University, they have con um, Macs, so I use Command D there. It's very confusing, but Command D is basically the shortcut for delete. Well, no, deselect. Um, the um, commands I use, or controls I use, are Control D, or Command D, which is deselect. Control Z, or Command Z, for undo, and Control Y, or Command Y, for redo. They're the best ones for me because I don't know any others. Or if you're on Photoshop, Control Alt Z for more than one undo because with Control Z, if you undo and undo again, it'll just go back. It does that thing where it's like, oh, you've undo undone it, but now you want to undo the undo, which makes no sense to me. So if you use Control Alt Z, it'll keep undoing backwards. It won't um, bounce forwards for for you. And here's where I'm using the tonal correction. As you can see, I have a lot of trouble with this. Because it just it either came out too blue or too purple. And I just keep going. You can't see the thing, but there's a tonal thing where it has where you can change the hues from cyan to yellow, from magenta to not cyan to red, magenta to yellow, and oh not magenta to green, I think. Hang on. Hang on. Cyan to red, magenta to green and no no magenta to yellow and green to blue so i used um mainly magentas and blues here and then desaturated them because i realized that the background isn't going to be saturated in the dark so that's what i've done here but i kept the leaves in their natural state and there's the flat color as you'll see which i'm proud of but i kept the leaves in their natural state because i really wanted them to stand out so you could tell that it was just the hidden leaf Oh, all this leaves and prettiness and wow sort of daily. I, I, it was just there to add more to the pictures. And now I'm onto the shading, which is what I said before. Which What I'm saying now is, I forgot that I'd, I've written it down, I didn't say it. Which is where I take the layer, I choose a blue or a colour that goes with the background. Because it's like a blue, it's night time, so I go with a blue or a purple. So I want blue. Um, and then I go over, I um, start sketching just so I know where I'm going, and then I pa t change the opacity to at least 50 or under 50. It cannot, it, for me, it, it's not higher than 50 because then it'll look too in your face. And that's what you get here because then it's like a bluish colour, but it's also not. If you're doing traditional comics and you want to shade this way, you can just use a multiply tool. Put it over your, um, over your inking or under your inking, but over, no, I think it's over your... I'm not sure where it is because I don't use this method as often, but you use a multiply tool and I'm not sure where you put it. Just keep experimenting until you find it. Because inking on a flat image, colouring on a flat image is impossible. So for the shading and the colouring, you need to use the multiply tool, which is a lot harder because you can't go one layer and then layer underneath it to stop sketch, stop colours melting in. Because multiply melts the colours in automatically, so you've got to erase the bits that go over all the colours. So that's why I prefer to sketch ink and colour digitally all at once instead of doing it in fractions. Like, I can sketch traditionally and then ink digitally, but I don't like to digitally traditionally ink and then digitally colour, unless it was a challenge for myself, which I do a lot. Adding the shading to the building. I use a rectangle tool. Re M rectangle. I use the um, polygon tool, or the cu custom lines tool, um, to add um, shading to non-organic areas, because, well, it's non-organic, it's not going to have smooth shading. <clears throat> I'm not feeling well. Um, so yeah, now I'm just overlapping the character with the shading so I knew where to go so I could add the polygon tool so I can add the shading. 
which is what you're seeing me do now. And then I realized that I haven't added the paint to the symbol on the back of the door, so that's what I've done here. Which I just used a basic watercolour brush tool and then erased it with a faded eraser. And now I'm adding the shading up here. See, even the shading, I do this on a different layer because then you can alter the shading if it doesn't work, like here. Which I'm really happy with. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I tried to use the polygon tool there, but it looked too stiff. Oh my god, I've been talking for an hour. It's neat. Do you know it's actually past midnight for me? So yeah, with the shading, it, I used a G-Pen again. I'd used a G-Pen for everything. You might just... It, it's never going to stop. <laughs> but for the actual um, trees and stuff, I don't add the shading to the top of the trees because that's where the moonlight's coming from. So that'll be lit up. It's same with the mountains and the other leaves and the trees behind them. Actually, I think I keep that bit shaded in the far background because of the fact is it's really far in the background yeah I do it's just because it's that far in the background it doesn't really have as much detail so that's why it looks like that and now I'm adding the detail to the actual um, sky itself I've had to use a spray paint tool because when I used the watercolour tool it kept coming out of faded grey so I used the spray paint watercolour tool for the bottom bit but the spray paint tool to get the um, dark part and then I added the stars with one of the stamps which was a sparkle stamp and you can go through and alter bits in the properties, which I couldn't show you, I'm sad sad to say. But um, if you just play about with it, you'll eventually find it yourself. And don't be afraid to use pre-made stamps. Make your own stamps as well, because they really help. Uh, don't know what else to say. Always, oh, another bit of advice I should have given straight on. Always have your centre, the light the direct light direction in mind always have where your lighting's coming from like for me it was straight above because it was the sky so the light was coming straight down but your sky if you had a lamp next to her there would be light coming from that lamp and you've got to shade it accordingly never put off shading in a background that wouldn't have shading in that area it will not look right and it will just it, it'll just take away from your drawings a lot of these can be sol solved by um, learning the fundamentals, really. Um, any fundamental of art can be used in comics. Um, because, um, well, the fundamentals are important. I didn't learn the fundamentals, and I'm struggling now more than ever. I'm not now, but I was struggling more than ever because I could not figure out how to improve my art. But now I feel like I'm improving and getting better with every new drawing. Because now I try to experiment more. I know what I'm doing to an extent now. I've still got another year of university left, so I can't wait to see what I learn then. Especially since the next year is going to be all be about personal improvement. I'm going to learn how to make a good style for myself, which I have. But it's always nice to improve it. You're never going to be perfect. Never going to have a perfect style. So if someone tells you, oh, I think this might look better with your style, give it a try. You don't have to keep doing it, but sketch something with it. Like, I tried to make a Steven Universe manga style, and it looked really good, and people actually said to keep that style along with my old one. So I kept both styles. I used this style in this drawing because it's my serious style, and my serious style is always going to be my ma majority of my work because I love serious stories. They're some of my favourites. I'm just adding her colouring to her sleeve. Here's where I use the lasso tool. You don't have to always draw it in yourself. You can use the lasso tool for the sketching, for the shading too. Uh, just doing her hair. Erased a bit so you could tell that that was hair follicles. Bit of shadow on the eyebrow, on the eyelid. Z. Eyelids. And neck and chin. And always a bottom lip and top lip. Just underneath. Because then it adds a bit of fullness to them. I even had shading to Kaide's um, burns on her cheek because it adds that bit of depth because she's actually got dark patches on her cheeks that are that rough they actually have shadows of their own. So I add them in there as well. Uh, I had shading to the bottle. If you look, I didn't add shading to the water in the bottle because at that point the shading of the bottle itself takes over the water. But when it comes to the water coming out of the bottle, I add shading to it then. Just give me a sec. I do a lot of different methods here, but 
I think because of the speed of this drawing, like, I didn't make it as fast because I want you guys to be able to see what I do and follow along if you want to. If you do end up following along and making a similar, if not the same, drawing, can I see it, please? I'd love to see it. Just, if you do, please don't take full credit for creating it because, yeah, it, it's not fair. It's it's just kind of, it, it just, I want to see it. I want to see you guys have been inspired by my work. Just don't claim it as your own, like the design, I mean, the actual comic page itself. But if you do sketch it or ink it or colour it or anything of the sort, make your own version of it, I want to see it because I'd love to see what you guys make because all art is amazing. And everyone, everyone is an amazing artist on the inside. If anybody tells you you're not, they're wrong. Everyone can sing, there's just practice that makes them a singer. Therefore, every art, everyone can draw, it's just practice that makes you a draw artist. It's, just, it's nothing, talent has nothing to do with it. It's just draw, draw and draw and draw and you'll be fine. See here, instead of using, oh I didn't mention, instead of using shadow in black areas with this colour, I use the colour for the shadows as highlight because the black is actually darker than the shadow I'm using. So it's like, okay, if I make it the highlight, it'll still work because I tried doing it the other way and it looked wrong because it looked like a shadow was coming in the wrong direction. So yeah, and I don't even shade the leaves either, because I really want them to stand out. I really want them to stick out and show you that they're there. So, um, I don't see any shadows on them, but I use the shading as highlights for any darker than average areas, like black in his hair, the black in his cloak. Just mainly black or really dark blues, or maybe even dark purples, depending on what I'm drawing. But Orochimaru has a lot of black colours, and Kaida has a lot of warm colours, and it's it's quite interesting to see them together, especially since Orochimaru hates Defiance, and Kaida is just Defiant. He gets used to it in the end, but he doesn't he doesn't like it, but he enjoys it's amusing to him. It's it's like it's funny it's funny and fun to see someone challenge him when they know they're not gonna win. He likes to prove them wrong, basically. <clears throat> I can have the shading to his face. I basically add it the same way I add it to Kaida. Which is in all the right areas. It was only it was harder around his sucked in cheeks. But I got it, I figured it out and it does look really good to me. Yeah. <laughs> and now for the hands. If I've forgotten anything in this video, by the way, feel free to tell me below or on any of my other social media platforms. And I will honestly and openly tell you in the comment or in any personal messages at all what I've missed out and like if you ask me what about certain methods I will openly give you extensive advice. I love to help everyone who draws because art is a community. It is an amazing place for amazing people and I love to help people. Especially people who understand my obsession with manga. It's manga. What's not to be obsessed about? I'm nearly finished with the shading at this point, which is woo! -hoo! Well, the basic shading. I've still got to highlight it and then blend the shading in certain areas. But they really don't take long at all. I'm nearly at the hour mark already, I think. So yeah, here we go. I'm just adding the shading kind of. I always do it. There's a lot of trial and error in every part of this drawing. And that's good. Don't be upset when it gets to trial and error. You are not going to be perfect first time. It's just keep going. Keep trying. Take a break if it's stressing you out. And then go back to it. I'll guarantee you it'll get better. And if you're looking at your art and thinking, oh, it's garbage, it's not. It's just that your eyes have improved faster than your drawing. What you've got to do is you've got to keep drawing, and it will improve in time. And then it'll be the point where your eyes aren't as good as your drawing. And then you'll be like, oh, this drawing's amazing, this drawing's amazing. And then your eyes will improve, and it'll be like, oh, this drawing needs improvement. And it's like, it bounces between. It's like, oh, it's good. It's not good. It's good. But it's always good. It's always good. It's just you're, you're learning, you're improving, and your mind is pr improving with you. So if your mind says it isn't good, it is. It's just that you've your eyes have improved to better quality. Therefore, you just practice alongside them, and your art will improve to better quality. It's always good. It's always good. I don't, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry, but it's just... I don't understand it myself, but... This drawing was one of those moments where my art was as good as my eyes. And I'm proud of it. But a few drawings I had where my art has been better than my eyes, my worse than my eyes, and it's the worst feeling in the world. But it's just it's part of the process. Don't get discouraged. Keep drawing. You're amazing. And another drink. This bit was the easiest bit to shared. Oh look at that! Look, I'm almost done. Oh my god, I'm almost done. Oh. Yep. 
Hey, see, see, done. Now we've just got our highlights, which is what I'm doing here. I'm adding highlights to the wood because I want to show that it has a scratched depth to it. Then I add highlights to put certain parts of Kai there so you know that she's in the light air, like she's got shine to her because I, it just adds a lot of depth to me. I add shines to pretty much every area that I think needs it. Specifically towards the direction of the lighting itself. And it just adds a nice pop to it. See, look. Look how good. Look at it. Look at it. Highlights make such a difference. And I'm not being arrogant. Your art will be amazing too. But it's just like, depending on how you use the highlights, makes you work better. Like, I used it, curved it with the rope belt she was wearing on her wrist and her forearm. Uh, shoulder. Mm, bicep. That's it. She was wearing on a hot t upper bicep. I added curved sh white highlights there to show that it had some rough, ropey texture to it. Like with everything else, it's trial and error. Just keep trying. The control Z thing is there. I accidentally took off the shading, so I needed to put the opacity all the way back up for my blue just to get the colour back. Which don't be afraid to do. Just always make a note of where your um, highlight, your opacity level was at. I didn't do that for this, and I regret it. Because it took me forever to get it back to the perfect point. Yeah, it was at that point that I realised that I hadn't highlighted the hand. And I need to add some highlights to the leaves. Because though I wasn't adding shading to them, I wanted to add highlights so they pop a little bit more. Which is what you're seeing here. Yep, look at that. Look at the shiny leaves. Look at the shiny leaves. And look, highlights don't have to be perfect. They just have to be at a good enough quality so they seem perfect. Like, like um, if it doesn't match the outline exactly, do not be upset by that. And always put the highlight layer above the line art layer for me anyway because it adds that little bit of depth to it because the outline isn't the do all and end all the highlights help and here I am adding the blending here I was using a fingertip tool so I could show the rough scratchiness of the um, background and then later on I get to the blur tool because I wanted to add more of a softer shade which is what I'm doing here see softer shades softer shades bit with background as well, usually towards the angle of the lighting. Or if the world, if it needs bumping up slightly, add some more softer shades to the hair. I only ever do it to the bits that, do you know when the shading goes outwards and there's those little bits where the light points inwards as well? I add the shading to that area so it looks like it's spiking outwards but it's got softer shading the further down it goes. So I don't add highlight, I don't blend the shading in all areas, only areas I believe that the shading sh should be soft, like the curve of the chin, or the bottom of the nose, or the top lip near the edge, or maybe the other way around, depending on what you like. Um, but adding that bit of softness really helps make your character feel more real, more in depth, more rounded, great, more in tune with it. And that's what I was doing here. And I'm nearing the end of the video now. I'm actually nearly done, and I'm proud of myself. Yes, I may have made a lot of mistakes, and I may not have actually made this into a tutorial video, which is why it's going to be a how to draw, how I make manga from start to finish, volume two. <laughs> I'm calling it volume two. I have to call it volume two, <laughs> because that's a manga volume. <laughs> or chapter two. I'll call it chapter two. So yeah, um... As final words go, I'll be moving on to the text process soon, and I recently realised that if you add the text first, and then add the speech bubbles, you're likely to get your text to be the same size, because I thought you had to do speech bubbles first, then text, but my text was all different sizes, and it was a bit disorientating. So my tutor taught me to do the text first, get the sizes to about what I wanted them to be, which was size 18 in this case, unless it was um, um, sound effects, then I would add them differently. And honestly, the hardest part after that was getting the speech bubble to look right around it. But honestly, I found it much easier than doing it the other way. Because the other way made it much more difficult to fit words in. And sometimes the word would be too small or too wide. And that's honestly about all I have time for. So you're just about to see a finished drawing. Here's the finished comic page. It's called Close Call. It'll be available on all my social media. I thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please check out all of my social media, DeviantArt, Fanfiction, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and my very own website. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Bye!